what to say. I'm going to ask her, answer. Ask her. I'm going to answer a couple of your questions that uh, I saw on, on the internet here. Let me see. Right before I go to bed and call it a night, um, let me go ahead and do this here. What did I think of Kell Brooks' performance? It was uh, nothing short but spectacular. But he did what he supposed to do to an opponent who basically wasn't on this level to, to begin with. So It's not saying that I wasn't impressed. It's just saying that he did what was expected of him. And I think his next fight against Devin Alexander will showcase to the world where he is or where I believe he is at 147 pounds. Now, this message is to all these young and upcoming fighters. This is for all of them. Not singling anyone out, but this is for you. There is a level of basically accomplishments that you can make in this sport. The big money fights, like everybody seems to want to try to do Floyd Mayweather. And what I mean is not like do his style, but I mean like they think they can cash out or oh, well, I fight this guy, I'm going to get all the money. You have to establish yourself first as a champion. Okay? You need to do that. You need to put your stake in the world. Floyd Mayweather did not come. That's why I put the the legacy video out because I didn't want y'all to not understand what it was like coming up. He wasn't always the flashy Floyd Mayweather who's on 24-7. His career didn't start <laughs> and when he fought Oscar De La Hoya. He had to fight his way up to get to this level. And by doing that, he made it, let me see, I think he made it no doubt that he was the best at every division he was in. You see, you, you have to do that. You have to establish yourself. Even in, you have to win those fights that the fans know that this guy was the best. Those kind of fights you got to win. You can't, like, skip over these and go to divisions just to get just to go after the money without fighting those guys. You know, uh, Pacquiao was able to do it because no one really deemed him as important as somebody they could look back on their legacy and say, oh, well, this guy is the guy that did such and such and such and such. I mean, his, his legacy is always going to have this big old asterisk right by it that you're going to say, he beat this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, and this guy. But, click the asterisk. <laughs> you know, so, that's how I felt about that. So, that's my message to the younger fighters that are coming up. They come up now, and there's Twitter, there's all this social media. They try to make fights through Twitter, and it's just nuts. You know, then they end up like, well, I'm not going to make a dime fighting that guy, so I need to go fight this guy. It's like, but this is the guy you need to fight. You know, it's the boxing fans know who you need to fight, the real ones, and they know who those are. You know, don't let the fighters fool you into thinking, oh, the fans don't know. No, 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 no. Not the fans, the casual fans that's on there. The boxing fans, the real ones, they know who you need to fight to get their respect. Okay, if you're thinking like, I don't need their respect, I'm just going to go get this money. Then you're going to have problems at the end of the road when people look at you for legitimacy. Those casual fans might think you're something, but the real boxing fans, are they gonna, if you think they're not going to throw it in your face, Oh, they're going to throw it in your face. <laughs> like I was trying to tell the guy, from one all the way to 135, you couldn't even find any leeway to throw at Floyd Mayweather for not making a fight out. Now, I'm going to go even further. 
Because on this question, y'all had said, well, why wouldn't Floyd just take 60-40? I mean, 65-55-45 just to make the fight happen. Manny's trying to make the fight happen. Listen, when is the first time you ever heard that? When he was promoting his already made fight against Marquez. First time you ever heard it. Right? They never mentioned it before. They never discussed it. You know what their solution was? Let's make the fight. Um, what do you say? We're going 45-45. And then the winner will get 10%. The other 10%. That was their solution. You know, you guys might have forgotten because you don't keep up with the timelines of when people are just using promotion for their own tactics. What did Bob Arum say last year? In 2011. Okay. When Marquez got robbed against Pacquiao. What did he say? The two fights he was going to try to make for the following year on the dates he said he said well we'll probably, probably do a fight with Tim Bradley next year and then we'll definitely try to do a rematch with Marquez in November he told you the, he told you the dates he told you the opponents and you got the opponents that he said that he was going to have Pacquiao fight this year at the same times on those fight dates that he said only you didn't listen when he said he was going to do it that's the only problem you didn't listen he said that this is what he was going to do and he did it why didn't you think he was going to fight Marquez why didn't you think he wasn't going to fight Bradley he told you he was going to fight Bradley when he fought Bradley. He told you he was going to fight Marquez again. I mean, it's it's obvious. The man, follow the bouncing ball. He does not care about making the Mayweather fight. It's not a priority to him. Because he only gets a percent of that fight. He's not going to be the head promoter of that fight. Now, after he gets what he wants and he runs out of big fights, then, yeah, it's going to make sense to him to make the Mayweather fight because that'll be the fight that will net him the most money. He makes more money off a of Pacquiao-Marquez fight than he would making the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight. It's the truth. Okay. What do I think of GGG? Uh, GGG is uh, solid. I think he's a, a great opponent. He's going to be, Cotto's going to be using him for sparring, I heard. Um, that should be interesting. If anybody wants to see Cotto uh, spar against GGG. Uh, oh, okay. What do I think about him and Peter Quillen? I think Quillen needs a couple more fights before he fights uh, GGG. Because if GGG can take Quillen's power, uh, it's going to be a long night for Peter Quillen. Long night, because he's going to be exerting a lot of energy. HBO commentators compared to Showtime commentators. Uh, I just think HBO needs to watch. Showtime commentators to see how it's, it should be done. That's what I believe. HBO commentators have a, a bad problem of, of telling their story instead of letting the fight tell its own story. And I stated that before, but they really seem to root for one guy and make the other guy feel like he shouldn't even be in the same room. So it's not like it's a fair playing field. It's like they're leading the audience to join their story of this is the good guy, this is the bad guy. And the good guy, bad guy theme is it's not necessary for every fight. Why can't they both be guys that's just trying to feed their family who just want to fight and put on a good event? And Showtime gives you that. 
They don't try to demean one guy and then make the other guy the hero. Sure, they'll sell a story too. I'm not saying that they won't. Showtime is good for that too. They will make an event around a story and and make it a, a into the big emphasis of what they want to happen. But they will give you a very good breakdown of the fight and then the, and during the fight they will tell you what the other guy needs to do to win what the keys are for this guy to win and what he needs to do to turn it around in the fight you know see you don't get that at HBO they're not gonna tell you what this guy needs to be doing what this guy should be doing you you get that maybe from Emmanuel Stewart from time to time but Lampley won't let him talk enough for that to happen only thing you're gonna get is rooting for one guy and that's not what we tune in to watch and it's almost time for Lampley I think to throw in the towel because I think this has been the worst year for boxing for him and it's, it doesn't seem like his heart's in it anymore he's just there to root for the fights fighters that he like or program to be liking so I don't know he's wearing too many caps he's an executive producer now he's doing his own little show so let him do that and go off into the sunset and retire doing the commentating and bring in some other guys that really really love the sport of boxing and let's have good fights man we got a lot of good fights coming up 2012 presented a lot of great fights and a lot of great matchups for the fans so if you're a true boxing fan you've enjoyed this year of boxing so far and people say my early candidates for fight of the year uh, I didn't agree with a lot of your lists that you sent me because most of these fight of the years that you had were just one person wiping out another person and to me fight of the year means that it, it had to go back and forth it had to be a competitive fight for me that's what it meant so Brandon Rios Alvarado is up there and then I did have the Lucas Matisse fight he had against um, the last fight he had against the other guy uh, what's his name uh, Amazon I think so if I'm mispronouncing his name I'm sorry I'm tired but I think that's a candidate also for fight of the year and so far those are my top two the fight of the year. There probably been some others, like Alvarado and Herrera is up there. So Mike Alvarado been in two fight of the years so far this year. And you know that's it for right now. I want to overload you. And all these other questions are basically repeats. But uh, I'm getting to them as many as I can. Peace.